Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we're going to be talking about Lewis structures of molecules and how to draw them. Lewis structures, uh, for a bit of background, they were named after the very, very famous American chemist Gilbert Newton Lewis, G.N. Lewis, who very controversially never ended up getting a Nobel Prize. He very probably should have. He was very dedicated to chemistry. He was so dedicated, in fact, that he actually died in the lab. He was busy doing an experiment one night. Uh, his uh, colleagues came in in the morning and they found him dead in the lab. That's what I call dedication to your science. Anyway. Um, molecules. What are molecules? Molecules are a bunch of atoms that are essentially stuck together using bonds. And those bonds are made up of electrons. And the whole sort of, I guess, guts of the idea of Lewis structures is that these electrons that hold molecules together tend to go in pairs. And so a single pair of electrons gives us what we call a single bond. Two pairs of electrons give us a double bond, and three pairs of electrons give us a triple bond. So, for example, we could say, right, we've got a hydrogen molecule. What would the Lewis structure of a hydrogen molecule look like? In order to figure this out, we use what we call the valence electrons, okay? And these are the electrons in a molecule that have the highest value of n, where n is the principal quantum number. <clears throat> and that can be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc., any positive integer. The valence electrons for hydrogen, a hydrogen atom only has one valence electron. It has got the electron configuration 1s1. So if you bring two hydrogen atoms together, they are going to form a single bond, and that single bond is going to be made up of two um, electrons. So here's your hydrogen molecule like this. The hydrogen in black brings one electron, the hydrogen in blue brings another electron, and we end up with a bond there that is made up of two electrons. And so we would write this, I guess in shorthand, like that. HH with a single stroke between them, okay? Um, another example, relatively straightforward example, would be, uh, let's say, the oxygen molecule, okay? Oxygen molecule O2, and so how do we construct uh, the Lewis structure of an oxygen molecule? We need to know what the uh, electron configuration of oxygen is. And so you can go to your periodic table and work this out. Oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So in terms of valence electrons, remember the valence electrons are the ones with the highest value of n, your principal quantum number, that's these guys here. Two and four make six valence electrons. So each oxygen has got six valence electrons that we can use to construct the Lewis structure. Uh, we know, for example, that uh, an oxygen molecule contains a double bond, and so that's gonna use up four electrons overall. And so a little bit of thought will hopefully convince you that an oxygen molecule is going to look like this, I guess, uh, whereby we've got two pairs of electrons on each oxygen atom. We call these lone pairs. And then in the middle here, we've got four electrons, which again, we would write in shorthand as something like this here. So these are relatively sort of straightforward examples. So hydrogen, oxygen, what happens when we get to Larger molecules, okay, how do we go about drawing these Lewis structural diagrams? So let's have a look at this molecule here, SOCl2. This is a thing called thionyl chloride. <laughs> uh, very reactive um, molecule, this one. You certainly smell this in the lab uh, very easily. It really stinks. And plus when it reacts with water, which it will with moisture in the air, it generates HCl, so it's really not very good for you. Anyway, SOCl2. How do we draw now the Lewis structure for this? Well, we need to know some things. Firstly, we need to know that sulfur is sort of the central atom in this particular molecule. So we start off by drawing this, and we know that 
bonded to the sulfur is an oxygen and two chlorines. That's the first thing that we need to know, which one's the central atom. The second thing that we need to know, how many electrons have we got to make up our Lewis structure. So, what have we got? We've got sulfur, uh, which is, what is it? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. And again, you can get that from a periodic table from the atomic number of sulfur. Oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. And chlorine, uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. So, how many valence electrons do each of these translate to? Well, remember, valence electrons are those that have got the highest value of n. So we've got 2 and 4 make 6 here. We've got 2 and 4 make 6 here. And for chlorine, we've got 2 and 5 makes 7. And we've got two chlorines, so that's going to be two lots of seven. So in total, what have we got? We've got 14, 20, 26. We've got 26 valence electrons to make up this Lewis structure. So where do we begin? Well, let's start, as I said, by knowing that our sulfur is the central atom, and we know that it is bonded to an oxygen and two chlorines. So the first step is to write out what we're going to call the sigma framework. And we're going to use single bonds to make our sigma framework. So we're going to have a, an oxygen here, we're going to have a chlorine here, and we're going to have a chlorine here. Okay? So that's, that's the basic framework of the molecule. A central sulfur bonded to two chlorines and an oxygen. Now, in doing that, how many electrons have we used? Well, we've used two in this bond, we've used two in this bond, and we've used two in this bond. So we've, we've used six, and so therefore that leaves us 20 electrons now to make up the rest of the molecule. So that's rule one, write out your sigma framework using single bonds. The second thing now is to put six valence electrons on each of the outer atoms. That's your second step that you always do in situations like this. So we put these as lone pairs on the outer atoms. So six on each, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six, 12, 18 electrons, 18 valence electrons that we've used. And that leaves us with two electrons. The next rule is after we've done that, we say, right, how many electrons have we got, got left over? And we put them all on the central atom. So we've got two electrons left over. We're going to put those on the central sulfur. And we've used those two electrons. Ta-da, we're all good. So we've used now these 26 valence electrons to generate our Lewis structure. Okay, And we might think that that's the end of the matter, but it's not. <laughs> of course, it would be too easy if it was like that. So, what do we do now? Right, the next step is to make sure that our formal charges are minimized. Okay, so what does that mean? So, formal charge. So, we talked about the electron configurations of the atoms before. We said that, for example, sulfur has got six valence electrons, uh, and that chlorine has got seven valence electrons. How do we then go about defining this thing called formal charge? This is defined as um, the number of electrons uh, wanted by the atom minus the number of electrons owned, I guess, by the atom. So what does this mean in practice? OK, so what we're wanting to do first up, the whole point is to minimize the formal charge on these atoms. So what are the formal charges on the atoms in each of these cases. Okay, let's have a look at chlorine in the first instance. Now, um, how, many how many electrons does a chlorine atom want? 
Well, we said that a chlorine atom had the valence configuration 3s2, 3p5. So ideally, it wants seven electrons, okay? Now, how many electrons does it actually own? <laughs> and I use the inverted sort of comma here. So we say that these lone pairs are owned by an atom, and an atom also owns a half of any electrons that are in a bond to it. So knowing that, this chlorine atom here, for example, owns those two, it owns those two, it owns those two, and it owns half of these two. In other words, it owns one. So add those up, two, four, six, seven. So the formal charge on chlorine in this case is gonna be the number of electrons that it wants, which is seven, the number of electrons that it actually owns, which is seven, and that's got a formal charge of zero. All good, okay. So this guy has got a formal charge of zero. As must this guy, because it's exactly identical by symmetry. So this guy must also have a formal charge of zero as well. So this is looking good for minimizing the formal charges. However, let's go to oxygen here now. So oxygen, oxygen had a valence configuration of 2s22p4. So in other words, it wants six electrons. How many does it actually own? So it owns those two, it owns those two, it owns those two, and it owns half of the electrons in here. Okay, so it owns another one. Two, four, six, seven. So oxygen wants six, it's got seven, so that gives it a formal charge of negative one, which may or may not be a problem. Let's see. So that's got a formal charge of minus one. What about good old sulfur here? So sulfur is, remember, 3s2, 3p4. Okay, six valence electrons. It wants six electrons. How many does it actually own? Well, it owns those two. It owns half of those two, half of those two, and half of those two. So it owns two, three, four, five. So it wants six, it's got five, so it's got a formal charge of plus one. Mm, okay, so can we do better? Can we minimize the formal charges on this molecule? And the answer is yes, we can. And the way that we do this, right, <clears throat> your oxygen's got too many electrons, hasn't it? It's got more than it wants because it's got a formal charge of negative one. The sulfur hasn't got enough. It's got a formal charge of plus one. It wants more electrons. So what we can do is we can say, right, we're gonna take one of these lone pairs and if we were organic chemists, we would do this to them. We would say, right, we're gonna take that lone pair here that is fully owned by the oxygen and we're gonna put it in here as a bond. And that will then give us something looking like this. We're gonna make a double bond now using that lone pair, okay. So let's do our calculation again now of our formal charges and see if that's made any difference. Okay, what do we got? Let's have a look at the oxygen again. Now, oxygen, it wants six, remember? How many does it own? It owns two, it owns four, and it owns half of those four now, which is two. Two, four, six. So oxygen wants six, it's got six, its formal charge is now zero. What about sulfur? Um, right, so how many does it own? It owns two, half of that makes three, half of that makes four, and half of those four makes six. Two, three, four, six. Sulfur wants six, it's got six, it now has a formal charge of zero. And there you go. Okay, so we've now got a Lewis structure in which all of the formal charges are minimized. They can't be any less than that, okay? Formal charge of zero, the other rule about formal charges is that they must add up to the total overall charge on the iron if there is any. In this case, there's not. Everything adds up to zero, so it's all good. So here then is your Lewis structure for thionyl chloride SOCl2. It consists of two single SCl bonds and a double SO bond, 
Each chlorine has got three lone pairs of electrons on it, and the oxygen has got two lone pairs of electrons on it. Okay, those, I guess, are the general principles for constructing uh, Lewis diagrams of molecules. If we're talking about ions, you need to take account of the fact that uh, ions have got uh, charges. And in that case, the overall sum of the formal charges has to add up to the charge on the ion. But the principles that we use are exactly the same, regardless of whether we're talking about neutral molecules or ions. And so hopefully this has removed some of the mysteries about uh, the drawing of Lewis structures. So we'll see you next time.